traditional format of an investigation in our industry was we would drill a hole, look at the soil, look at the water, kind of screen it, collect some samples, send them off to a lab. A week or two later, we'd get some data back, we'd look at it, and then decide what we were going to do next, drill more holes, collect some more samples, go here or there. One of the things that's been an innovation in our industry is being able to collect data real time. And so there's three different techniques that we're using on a regular basis now where the data is actually collected relatively real time in the field. And so we can be making decisions right there about where to go next, maybe where to collect samples, what to do next. And one is called HPT, one is called MIP, one is called LIF. HPT is a hydraulic profiling tool. And what that allows us to do is to get physical properties of the subsurface as we're drilling the borehole. They can gauge whether that is a permeable formation like sand or gravel, or whether it's a relatively impermeable formation like a silt or a clay. And that kind of gives us an idea of maybe where the chemicals might be going. Before, got two or three measurement as we went down a 50-foot borehole. Now we've got literally hundreds, if not thousands of measurements. The depth of data that we get from a tool like that is just incredible. Another tool tests chemistry is the, the MIP, or Membrane Interface Probe, a tube that goes down with the, the head of the uh, bore, and a carrier gas gets circulated through that tube. And as that carrier gas uh, intersects uh, someplace that has chemicals, the chemicals migrate into that gas, and then it comes up to the surface and gets analyzed in an analyzer right there. Third is LIF, which stands for Laser-Induced Fluorescence. And that's a similar tool to detect chemistry and what it does is it shoots a laser beam out from the tool that leads the boring and as that light goes out uh, hydrocarbons such as gasoline or diesel fuel or something like that they light up from the laser it's called fluorescence and they each have a different wavelength of light and by analyzing the wavelength of light we can tell number one if there are chemicals there and number two sometimes what kind of chemicals. Passive soil gas is a neat technique that's been around for a little while and in passive soil gas we can figure out where the hot spot is. By using passive soil gas we can put these little probes right at the ground surface, leave them in for a couple weeks, come back and we can get this nice map of the distribution of, say if it's trichloroethylene or benzene in the soil gas, and know exactly where the hot spot is. And it's a lot cheaper than drilling a lot of holes. One of the things that we did when we were investigating the groundwater contamination issue in, in Salina was to use iPads in the field for taking notes. The geologists, had forms digitized so they could put in all the information related to soil and groundwater and groundwater chemistry. We would be able to evaluate on a real-time basis where we needed to drill next. With the information that we get from these high-resolution site characterization tools, we not only can advance our investigations quicker and more cost-effectively, but we're also getting better information in order to be able to develop the solutions. When we're doing litigation, which we do frequently. It's not my interpretation. I don't make up data, I get data, and the data tells the story. So whenever I testify, I don't say, this is what I think. I say, this is what the data indicate. Because if you've got data, say, from groundwater, and data from chemistry, and data from isotopes, and data from soil gas, and they're all saying the same thing, that the story is there the data tell the story.